Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be here with you again and discuss uh, the global uh, supply demand scenario as we see it at Oil World. Um, we are doing this um, since 1958. Uh, ISTA Mielke, International Statistical Agra Information. Um, we are analyzing the world market uh, now for more than 50 years. Uh, we haven't seen these dynamics and price volatility uh, of the past uh, three years and uh, we are quite convinced that this, this price volatility is going to continue um, uh, in the next few years. There are many reasons uh, to believe this. Now, uh, outline of my presentation, um, I will try to try to find out uh, how long the current tight situation in soybean meal will persist. I'm going to discuss with you the uh, impact of the record, the global impact of the record U.S. soybean crop, uh, the outlook for South America and the uncertainties in South America, primarily the political uncertainty. And I would like to look more closely on the different fundamentals for the first and the second half of the season. There may be one challenge for the soybean producers next year. Is soybean meal consumption big enough next year to absorb the prospective sharp increase in production? So just the opposite of what we are seeing at the moment. And I would finally look at the key price determining factors if, if the mic is still on when I'm there. I don't know yet. They, they switched it off one time because it was so long. So, uh, not here, not <coughs> here, not with you, a different, different group. <laughs> now, what is the situation? Soybean meal prices have rallied $120 since March. They are not far from their record, and they are about double the long-term average. This is clearly showing we are in a really, really tight situation. Uh, one of the reasons is, of course, uh, the uh, disaster in South America and soybeans with production plummeting by 19 million tons in the current year after it stagnated last year. Um, so. Uh, you can say that the soybean production in South America is in trouble for already two years now. And, you know, on top of that, we had this severe drought, the worst drought in 70, some people say 100 years. And it will take some time until the results of this drought is being, you know, accommodated. Uh, it's still stretching into September. The tightness is still stretching into September, February, despite the record U.S. crop. Now, the result of that was a steep decline, an unprecedented decline in soybean meal production, in soybean crushings and soybean meal production, and uh, a significant decline in soya meal trade by about 4 million tons. Uh, other oil meals could not really compensate the losses, uh, so world, the, the world, the global market for oil meals were shrinking uh, significantly for the first time in, in uh, many, many years. An unusual situation. Um, demand had to be rationed. Uh, the economic crisis helped in this rationing process. But livestock numbers were cut in several countries. In Europe, United States, and many other countries. And it will take time until these uh, livestock numbers are uh, replenished again. It will take time to rebuild pork and cattle herds. And therefore, we are quite pessimistic about the global meal demand for 2010. Therefore, it is our concern that the meal demand may not be expanded sufficiently next year so that we are really, if the South American crops comes up to expectations, that we are really moving into a surplus situation 
in beans and meal. Uh, summary for next season, for, the, for all the 10 oil seeds, we are facing a production surplus, uh, which we estimate at 14 million tons. This looks rather bearish, but if we, if we go more closely into the, into the individual quarters, we come to a slightly deviating uh, result. First of all, um, we, should, we should recognize that uh, we, we faced two years of production deficit. And uh, no wonder. Uh, w prices rallied significantly uh, in 2007 and, rem and also 2008 and remained well supported uh, so far in 2009 because of two years of insufficient world oilseed production. Uh, and as a result of that, soybean prices were very high, you see this here. Now, um, I think it's important to, uh, to notice that uh, the uh, global supply of all oil seeds will continue to decline in September, February in the third consecutive year. Now we are calculating that the global supply will be down by about 5 million tons because the prospective increase in northern hemisphere production of oil seeds of 6 million tons will be more than offset by the sharply lower global stocks at the beginning of September by about 11 million tons. So in total, we are still in a tight situation despite the record, uh, record US crop. This is more than offset by other influences in the rest of the world um, so that the supplies are still tight. Therefore, we expect that soybean prices uh, will be well supported uh, the price uh, decline we have seen over the past two weeks um, may not last long, I think, or we believe that the soybean futures will stay above nine, $9 uh, for November futures. Uh, I come back to this later for several reasons. And that the meal price will also be well supported by the difficult supply, uh, supply outlook for September, February. It's only in the second half of the year when uh, we are going to see a surplus in soybeans and soybean meal. Now, uh, uh, we calculate uh, soybean stocks in the three major countries, US, Brazil, and Argentina, um, uh, to be uh, down by 11 million tons from, or 10 million tons from last year, at the lowest level in more than five years actually an eight-year low, very difficult situation. So nothing must go wrong. We, uh, if we get a freeze in the US, second half of September, we are going to be in trouble. Or if we get any problems, political or climatic problems in South America, we may also be in trouble. The world has consumed all the reserve stocks in soybeans and other commodities. For the US, we are, uh, at the moment, we are estimating a crop of 88.2 million tons. That's about a million ton more than the USDA is estimating, but it could go to 90 if, if we can prevent frost and if we, if we really have nice weather until early October, which we need to mature this late crop. But, as you can see, uh, primarily because of the strong world demand in the first half of the season, there is little scope for replenishing soybean stocks in the U.S., which we just see at 5.5 million tons or 6.6% of annual usage, which we would describe, still describe as tight. Uh, 